All right, just over half an hour till the opening bell on Wall Street. Joining us now, Joanne Feeney, partner and portfolio manager at Advisors Capital Management. Joanne, good morning. I mean, it seems like uh, things have calmed a bit here. That intense kind of liquidation we saw, whatever leverage trades that were getting unwound a week ago, that has passed through. But we're still left with how much we have to kind of account for the slowdown in the real economy and the potential impact on earnings. So. How, what's your view right now uh, as we sit about 6% below record highs in the S&P? Yeah, that was quite a ride we took last week. And <clears throat> as I wrote in our commentary this morning, you have to really look through that big adjustment, which had a very specific cause to the broader economy and the opportunity for equities here. And we see a couple of things happening. One, the U.S. economy is still pretty strong. Uh, and the consumer remains the, the big driver here with uh, disposable personal income adjusted for inflation still growing year over year. GDP growth, still pretty strong. So the aggregate picture, uh, despite concerns, is still pretty supportive of equities. And then you turn to earnings. And while folks might have been a little disappointed in how some of the mega cap stocks are spending on investments to enable AI, the fact is that their growth is really quite exceptional. Now, some people are saying, hey, but you know, where are all these big returns to AI? How come you guys aren't reporting that? And I have to counsel people to be patient because artificial intelligence is going to take some time to appear. And what we also need to look at is the earnings growth of the other 493 companies in the S&P 500. Yeah, and that, uh, I guess, had some focus a few weeks ago. Remember, the talk was all about, oh, this market's going to magically broaden out without any pain along the way. We don't have to have to have a correction. We can just pass the baton to the rest of the companies. But it is a good point that, you know, I was looking at Home Depot, Bank of America, Union Pacific, all these real economy businesses have basically been flat on sales and net income for three years. So is that an area to look at in terms of non-tech, non-secular growth, even if the economy's slowing down? Yeah, I think that's a, a good place to look for a few reasons. One, most of those companies you mentioned have a, an appealing dividend yield. And so while you know volatility is always part of equity investing, and maybe more so now, and so having that income might be reassuring to folks. But also structurally, when you think about where the shortages exist in this economy, one of the areas is housing. And so if people can't find a new house to move to, uh, because they maybe want to hang on to that low mortgage or simply because there aren't any available if you're a first-time home buyer. Um, what are you going to do as a current home buyer? You're, you're going to fix up the house you have. You're going to get ready for it. So Home Depot, you just mentioned, is a good place to be, even though it hasn't performed well over the last three years. As you said, it's really set up for a good ride, we think, going forward. And beyond that, look at Lennar position to build houses for first time in one step up home buyers. That is where the market is. The demand is there. The shortage still exists after many years of underbuilding. So there are places to look in the real economy, as you put it, and in industrials with the infrastructure bill yet really to pay out a lot of dollars. We're seeing some bridges go up. We're seeing some demand for even hotel rooms because of that construction that's coming. We like some of the industrial plays like a Honeywell, for example, or an Emerson or an Eaton in that space.